This was a little book that we made for my father when he was in long-term care. Laura Pinto's father, Bob, was admitted um, to a Windsor, Ontario nursing home in 2017 with dementia. After a series of bad falls, doctors put him on a cocktail of sedatives to ease his restlessness. Most of it was antipsychotic medication for a person with no diagnosis of psychosis. He went from a person who had dementia to basically like a zombie, like he was in a non-responsive state most of the time. So drugged up that when he was sent to hospital after one fall, staff needed to give him a shot of Narcan, commonly used to reverse an opioid overdose. It's devastating to watch a person deteriorate like that. Pinto's story is not unique. Newly obtained figures from the Canadian Institute for Health Information show potentially inappropriate use of antipsychotics spiked during COVID lockdowns, reversing a long downward trend. At 23.9%, this year's provisional numbers are the highest since 2016, meaning almost one in four long-term care residents are now receiving the drugs without a diagnosis of psychosis. Another cause for concern after two years of isolation and staffing woes, says this expert. Across Canada in long-term care, there were just devastating effects um, for residents and for staff. So particularly for residents who have dementia, um, various antipsychotics um, have been shown to increase the risk for death, uh, for stroke, um, for other cardiovascular events as well. Melissa Miller litigates care home malpractice. She thinks Ottawa needs to step up and fulfill its 2020 promise to create binding national standards something that would cover antipsychotics. Provinces do not get a single dollar of federal funding unless they comply with the standards in the Canada Health Act. Full stop. We do not have a similar carrot and stick mechanism for long-term care. Health Canada says it's been working collaboratively with the provinces to improve the quality of long-term care and that the new national standards will be finalized in the coming months something that can't happen soon enough for the families of the 25 to 30,000 care home residents who appear to be receiving these drugs inappropriately. Jonathan Gatehouse, CBC News, Toronto.